Hello everybody, welcome. 6th of April, 6th of April. And it feels like spring is here. Well, it's nearly about 70 degrees here today. So, anyway, just to update you, I'm here in a kiln shed. I am um, in the process of packing the kiln. I just wanted to show you that chimney you know, that I was rebuilding the other day before it's all hidden with pots. I just wanted to show it to you. Um, so, you just put these here. I'll put those bowls in. I've got some more pots over there. Um, up there, as you can see, a few kind of character bowls on the top shelf there, otherwise known as tea bowls, but I prefer to call them character bowls. Anyway, uh, a few GP bowls down there. There I've got some tankards with like medallions on the front. And I've got a load of pots in here that I've got to do something with. Look at them all clogging up the works. It's been a winter, hasn't it, to remember. Whew. I got sick again as well with a cold and everything. So I'm just getting over that. Okay, so uh, let me just take the camera off the tripod here. And um, yeah, just uh, this kiln is a regular kiln, an uh, electric kiln converted to gas. And I have added another row of bricks here in between the rings, you see, which, which you can do. And um, so I'm just packing a bisque at the minute. There's the rebuilt chimney, um, not yet fired, but the cement has gone hard, so after it's been fired it should be uh, pretty solid. And then around the edge, all around the edge up here, I've put this um, ceramic fibre, I had some ceramic fibre kind of board stuff. and. You can see some remnants of it here that I was that I was using this high temperature uh, blanket in a sort of stiffer a stiffer form. You know, you can get it in all kinds. So, um, yeah, that's to that is to provide here uh, a seal. Actually, what I've yet to do is go over the edge all down here with uh, some of that more of that uh, cement slightly liquid and what you've got to remember to do is always spray it you know with the um, before you apply the cement what you want to do is is wet it you see like that and then brush over the cement and it'll stay then it'll stick so yeah I've got the shelf already put one shelf in I've got to remember to put the cone over there so I better get my lump of clay just to <laughs> do you have a do you have a pack of kiln and then suddenly you realize oh no I didn't put the cone <laughs> so I'm just gonna stick the stick the lump of clay there for the minute and um, put the tri the camera back on the tripod here let's see like that and Maybe we'll... I know packing a bisque is boring, but you know what? It's it's one of those jobs that there is some skill involved in in packing a bisque, isn't there? Um... Little tricks of the trade, you know, that you maybe as a beginner you wouldn't know. Um, these are some little, as I say, I call them character bowls. They're they tea. They're what otherwise known as tea bowls. Oh my goodness! I forgot to trim that one. Look. <laughs> Actually, I I left it I left it like that on purpose because it had a nice swirl on the bottom. You see, and I thought, no, nope, I'm gonna leave that one. I don't have to trim out the bottom if I don't want to. So yeah, these are like paddled with a, a paddle with um, burlap on. You can see it's got the burlap sort of, and these ones are have been clouted with a chopstick. You see, in in a random 
random fashion, as one can do. So I'm just, you know, as you can see down there, those, uh, you see, I, you can stack, I've got three high here. Um, what you want to bear in mind is when you're packing a bisque, you are dealing with pots that are not fired and they're fragile. So you've got to think of weight. Now if you pack, that, the top one is probably fine, the middle, one, the middle one is probably reasonably good, but you just think about the one on the bottom. He might be a little bit under the strain, you know, the weight of the two above. So, you know, you see those, um, you know, you see those circus acts sometimes, don't you? You see those people, they, they jump on top of each other's shoulders, one on top of the shoulder, and then another one climbs up, and then another, and then another. And, and you sort of think, my goodness, how high can they go? But and then I always think, well, hang on a minute, what about the poor guy on the bottom who's, who's carrying, he must be incredibly strong. <laughs> So anyway, so think of that analogy when you're packing a bisque that the pots, I'll just show you some of these as I, as we, as we go, I didn't show, I, we didn't video these when I made them, this one is um, sort of uh, cross hatched, you know, again I use a chopstick for that, when it was wet, you know, on the wheel. La la la. So, a couple high there. Actually, I'm just thinking I've got some, I've got some pots up there. I forgot. You see, look, Shh. way up there, hiding on the top shelf. Do you ever lose pots in your studio? Look at them up there, waiting. You see, thinking they can get away with it without getting burnt up in my kiln. <laughs> well, you're in for a surprise. Come on, you. Hey, look at these little guys. Now these, whoops, hang on. Swing, swing the camera down a bit so you can see. These are, you see, these are paddled with a paddle. Paddle with circles. And then I've got different paddles that we sell actually on the website. This is, this is paddle with, this is a little lidded, lidded caddy, you see, paddled with a star paddle. Starry, starry night. Okay, well we're going to get these in I think because they have been loafing around here in the studio for long enough. Oh, come here you. Oh, look at this one. Here's another one. He's quite a decent fella, isn't he? He's actually quite easy to make, you know. He's, if you can throw a cylinder, you can throw one of those. Because that's all it is, really. It's just a bellied-out cylinder with a, f with a flange and then a cap lid. So, yeah. So, so, so. No, wait a minute. I always think uh, packing a kiln is a bit like a, a three-dimensional three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. You know what I mean? Now that one I might be able to. It's got to be a bit careful. You see, you don't. I think he'll be okay actually, upside down on the, on his brother like that, you see. And do, do, do. Now another thing it's good to do is have a straight edge when you're packing a kiln. I always have a straight edge handy, like this, you see. So you can put it across and see how much clearance you've got in relation to your pots. All right, so we'll keep that there handy, handy dandy, and uh, yeah, here's a here's a a bottle. 
we'll stick that in there. Sometimes when I'm packing a kiln, I'll randomly put a few pots because I, I don't want to forget them, so I'll get them, put them on a shelf, and then I sort of jiggle them in, you know, where, where they fit. Um, I've got a stack of bowls here that you see. Now this is, this is, you see here what we've got going on here. Oh, we've got a bit of sand in there. Okay, good. You can see what we're doing here. These are bowls that are fluted, for the most part, I think. Um, that one's n not fluted. So first of all, what you really want to do is, that's fluted, and that one is, is sort of faceted. So you can see a bit of sand in the bottom. First of all, grade them by size. So you want the widest, biggest one on the bottom. Then take the next one, put a little bit of sand down the bottom, and then nestle him, you see, just into the sand like that. And then, I think this one came next, didn't it? So he's, he just nestles in there like that. And then this one, he's going to go on top. He just nestles there. That's the way I did it. So, and now if you do it like that, make sure, make sure when you lift, you lift him right down here at the base. Okay, don't l try to lift this up off your work table holding it too much on the edges here because you'll, you'll crack him. All right, so just be wary of that. So take the weight at, at the bottom. So, hang on, let me put that one there. Yes. I'm just thinking about where I'm going to put them, actually. Because uh, a stack of bowls like that, if I put that on the shelf, I'm not really going to be able to put much on top of that, you see. So it's better, in a way, if that came kind of like last, so it would be up here somewhere near the top rather than way down there because it's going to, I'm going to lose space. I'll put them to one side for the minute. Meanwhile, I've got some more of these character two balls. <coughs> um, these, uh, this one just thrown without any paddling or anything. Same with that one. Um, these ones, these ones uh, were paddled um, with a, a a bat, a paddle rather that had like very fine lines in it. I think it was originally for butter or something. So I carefully did that. You see, uh, that could be quite. Uh, interesting the thing about clay is it loves to be impressed doesn't it so impress it for all it's worth is what I say if you can find something that's going to leave you don't want to leave a bad impression you want to leave a good impression <laughs> you know what I mean mm -hmm. I'm just sticking these here on top of those that row of pictures that I have there Well, this one's beaten about. You see, this is another one of those. Uh, I did that with a, clouded it a million times with a chopstick. You see, when you do it, when it's wet on the wheel, this is before you lift it off. Put your hand on the inside. You see, so that when you when you hit it with the stick, it it doesn't just sort of like flop. It's got some resistance there from your fingers, you see, as you hit it. It's worth bearing in mind. This is again exactly the same uh, technique, with smacked with the chopstick, not quite so much, and a little bit more vertical. Sort of the <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, I just put some dots there you see just to give the effect of uh, like you would if you looked across a field you'd see 
like seed heads, you know, on the top of grass. That's all it is. It's just to do that. So those t those two. Few more here. These are just plain ones, though. Just plain. Let me just put those there. <clears throat> I've got a. Oh yeah, I got this funny fella. <laughs> You'll laugh at this one. Oops, sorry. There's a little. There's <clears throat> a little sculptural piece. Um, it's thrown, it's hollow, and uh, I don't know, that's how it ended up anyway. I kind of like it, you can put your fingers through it like that. Maybe we call that one a stress pod. So, you know, if you're stressed, you pick it up off the sideboard and you, and you hold it, you see. And it calms you down. Okay, so anyway, just, just to update you on the kiln, I've got to do a little bit more. I'll just show you this quickly and we'll finish this. Uh, where the burners go down there. I've got a thing I've got to repair. You see, you see that bit there? It broke off. Uh, I think it, yeah, I think it goes like that. It sort of forms a, a kind of cowl for the, for the burner you see on the side of the kiln. Because if you didn't have that there, this, this being at a raked back angle because it's round, um, it gets sort of like uneven uh, oxygen entering here. Plus, you really don't want to be resting your burner inside there because it gets too hot. You want your burner out, you see. Sort of like about what we've got here, looking like that. You want to allow, you see, for some... This here is what we call primary air. It goes in here. And then the... The other oxygen or air that's drawn into the kiln it comes in here around the around the side of the burner. We call that secondary air. So primary and secondary. Anyway, this kiln is fired with these um, these weed burners, which I've talked to you about before, which are pretty powerful, and you have to be careful that you don't go too fast. It has the ability with this size kiln and two of those to rip it up to a high temperature much too far. So you want to slow it down, you see. Slow firing is generally a bit better because it gives more time for the glaze to mature better. So, so that's it. That's the my update on my kiln so far. I'm gonna fire this. I'll fire it, I'll fire it tomorrow. And um I'm not going to fire it today because it's already quarter past four or something. So uh, I've got to put the kiln, uh, the cone in. That's the next thing. Thanks for joining us, folks, and uh, please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. Tools there, uh, pottery wheels, um, pottery wheels, tools. What else? <laughs> Workshops, dates are there. If you fancy coming on a workshop here to central Pennsylvania, it's very pretty around here, I have to say. The countryside, let me just... It's not looking so pretty at the moment because it's winter. Well, I mean, it's still pretty, even in winter, isn't it? But you see, with a lot of, we've got hills. And the town of Milheim is just, just down in the dip there. We're slightly higher up here. But you can see... There's um, hills around, and we've got Amish buggies going left, right, and centre everywhere, and it's all very rural. 
and all together very pleasant. And you can stay in some um, bed and breakfasts that you can find on my on my website. We do put some accommodation suggestions there, so if that's something that interests you. We have a real ale, uh, the Elk Creek Cafe here in, in Milheim. We've got the Green Drake Gallery, all type of different kinds of arts and crafts. We have poetry reading once a month. We have live music. We have open mic. We have all sorts of things. So there's a lot going on between, you know, culturally, we have farmer's market that I participate in from time to time, as you know. Take my, my small wheel down there. And later we're going to be doing the farmer's market further up the valley there in a spot outside under a, like a pavilion. We do it there. So, as I say, a lot happening. So, yeah, come for a weekend, come for a few extra days, enjoy. Okay, folks, thanks for joining us. Thanks for checking in. <laughs> and keep practicing. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.